ಆರೋಗ್ಯರಾಮ Welcome to the Platinum Grats and Gaming Show from beautiful and sunny Las Vegas, Nevada, the gambling capital of the world. I'm your co-host, Amber. Tonight's show is titled The Truth About Dice Setting. We look forward to your questions and comments during the show. So let's get started. Your host is the G-Man, aka g Craps, and the author of the Platinum Crafts and Dice Setting book. Direct from Las Vegas, let's welcome Garrison. Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome from Sin City and Viva Las Vegas. Bright Light City gonna send my soul. All right, little toast. Uh, the new monthly Platinum Craps and Gaming Show will cover not only craps, but other games and sports handicapping. So later we're gonna give you the uh, email address if you wish to be a guest or know somebody who would like to be a guest. All right. Being that this is the premiere show, I want to take time out to just thank a few people. First, all the members uh, of YouTube, all of our Facebook members, the Platinum Craps and Dice Setting Group members, and to everybody that's uh, taking time out to read the Platinum Craps book or the Super System, we thank everybody for their support. In less than two years, with your growth, we've uh, hit uh, some maximum records, and we really appreciate it. In fact, uh, one of our uh, members was kind enough to send in this beautiful shirt to us. It's got the Platinum Craps logo. He put my name on it, Garrison Russell. So Danny, if you're out there, thank you very much. Uh, we certainly do appreciate it. I also want to thank Mr. Derek Oliver and David Carlin uh, from uh, High Roller Radio and Talking Craps. Uh, they were kind enough to invite me as a guest on their show and they uh, helped motivate us to actually do the, this show. We also want to thank Carl, uh, Allman, and Marlon, two of our tech guys. They did a great job, and they also did the uh, comment for setting up the video. All right, so uh, I think we will uh, get started. And if I can bring something up right here, I want to bring up uh, three gentlemen who should be in the Crabs Hall of Fame. Uh, if, the, if there was a Mount Rushmore, these would be the first three people, and I dedicated the Platinum Craps book to these people. John Wynn, John Scarney, and of course the man himself, Mr. John Patrick. He wrote the foreword for the Platinum Craps book, and I'm truly honored. I'd also like to thank my uncle, who years ago, when I was just a young man at 15, really introduced me to the game of craps. All right? So, let's get started. I think we should... Uh, Give a big welcome to our uh, co-host, Miss Amber. All right, let me unlock this and bring her back. All right. Hey, there she is. Here I am. All right. And because it's our first show, let's give her a nice rose. Wow, All thank right. you, Garrison. I All appreciate right. that. Uh, we want to say uh, hello to Amber. She's going to be uh, bringing up your questions on screen. So... Uh, Ask her your questions, and yes, guys, we know she's adorable, all right? But you better be uh, careful, because uh, if you're not nice to her, she uh, won't answer your question, and she knows how to take care of people. He's right. right. So behave. All right, let's do a little toast, Amber. Let's do it. Uh, by the way, I've got my King Dice Cup, all right? Shout out to King Dice and all of his members. And uh, I don't know about you, since this is the first show... I think uh, we definitely should probably... I'm going to start out with uh, Smirnoff's, everyone's favorite. So we'll put a little in there, That's put a little in Amber's. 
All right, let's be real relaxed. And toast to all the members watching. Toast to you, Amber. Thank you. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for having me. All right, Amber, we'll be back, everybody. All right, so tonight's show is called The Truth About Dice Setting. Now, many uh, books have been uh, written and many people have read books on dice setting, but a lot of them really just don't know the true math of, the, uh, of dice setting. So what I want to do is I want to go over that, and I think we should probably go to the table. Um, I'm just going to go right to the table. You can still hear my voice. All right, now, in reality, and I know you've heard a lot of different uh, formats, there's what they call six, t uh, six master sets in dice setting, all right? <clears throat> when you work with a set of dice, there's what they call uh, master sets. And if I can uh, bring up the book, I'm going to bring up page 22. If you have your book on page 22, you're going to see what a dice set is. A dice set is the two inside access numbers, but each die has an A side. I hope you can see this. I got locked out for some reason. Okay. And a B side. All right. So when you have a, a set of dice, you're going to have an A side and a B side. Right, let me come back to this. Sorry. Somehow we got frozen out. But the dice have what they call an A side and a B side. The other die has an A side and a B side. So when you uh, start out with your dice sets, I'm going to start out with the most common set, the 6161 set. So one die has a 1, the other die on, uh, on one side it also has the 6, the other die has a 1, it also has a 6. I think we can go back to the uh, table right now. Okay, yeah, there we go. So you take the A from one die and the B from the other, and you put it together. Now, everybody knows this is the hard way set. You've got hard ways all the way around. You may have heard that uh, you can uh, double pitch one die and you'll get all seven sets, and that's true. But remember, the dice can go either forward, two pitches, and that's all sevens, or that same die can go backward, two pitches, that's all sevens. The other die, this is my left, probably your right, that can go forward two pitches, all right, and give you all sevens, or it could go backward two pitches, and that'll give you all sevens. Also, most people don't know this, that the die, one die can go forward one pitch, the other die can go backward one pitch, that's all sevens. Or that same die could go backward one pitch, and the other die can go forward one pitch. That's all sevens. So there's a lot of ways to, to uh, get a, a, a seven from the uh, uh, come out or all seven set. And here's another thing a lot of people don't know. You've got your A and your B on both dice. But if you, t if you uh, to turn those around, now you have B and A. It's the same set. You haven't changed any of the 16 numbers. You could also go A, A and put those two sides together, in this case the two ones, or you could go BB and put those sides together. It doesn't change the 16 combinations on the dice. And I've read uh, situations where people say, oh, we can have two, three, four, oh, 500 different sets on a set of dice. Well, that's mathematically impossible when you only have six sides. What they do is they take the dice set and every time they pitch it one pitch, they call that a new set. Well, it's not because you still have the inside access numbers. So if you had six sets and each master set has four subsets, A, B, B, A, 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 or B, B, and you multiply that, that's 24. Since you know that every set and subset has 16 combinations, 24 times 16 is 384 combinations. So they say you have all these different sets, but in reality, it's the same set. They just count it multiple times. All right, I hope you understand that. I'm going to come back to the book here, and uh, we're going to go to page 19 in the book. All right, now these are what they call your sister numbers. Everyone knows that each die 
as a sister number. If one is facing, is if you're looking at the one, six is the uh, sister number. If you're looking at the two, five is the sister number. If you're looking at the uh, uh, four, three is the sister number. Now when you put a set of dice together, if one die equals seven, what's two times seven? Fourteen. So if you're looking at the aces on top, all right, what equals 14? 12. If you have 3 on top, which is the uh, 1, 2, you have 11 on the bottom. And it goes all the way through until you get to the 7. And if 7's on the top, 7 is the uh, sister number. So that's kind of important. And the reason I say that is because when we teach, if the dice are coming towards you, the dealer's uh, uh, sending you the dice, and you don't know your sister numbers, if you're looking at the 4, you know the 3's on the inside. Okay? All right, we just got locked out again. I don't know why we're getting locked out, guys, but sorry about that. Somehow the camera is uh, locking us out. All right, so I'll just do it here. But anyways, you want to know your sister numbers. There's six master sets. Four of them work for the do shooter, and two of them work for the don't shoot. And all the sets are in the book. I broke it all down for you. We even send you a dice setting strategy card that breaks it all down. But here's the way it breaks down. You've got six out of 36 ways to roll a seven. That's 16.66%. With the hard way set, the, show, the set I just showed you, you have four ways out of 16 combinations. That's 25%. And when you set the dice after you establish your point, you have two ways out of 16 to, a, uh, to roll a 7, which is 12.5%. So the highest way to roll a 7 is with the hard way set, 4 out of 16. Uh, random, it's only 6 out of 36 for 16.66. 6. And then when you set the dice the way we show you in the book and the way we teach, it takes you down to two ways for the uh, 7, which is 12.5%. Uh, so I think that's pretty important to know. And here's another thing a lot of players don't uh, know. And I put this, I did this in another interview, so I may be repeating what some people uh, have already seen, but it's important for the new people. There's three ways to make the six, and there's three ways to make the eight, and there's two ways to make the seven. So the odds go from six to five against you uh, in a regular game to three to two in your favor. There's two ways to make the four, two ways to make the five, two ways to make the uh, nine, and two ways to make the 10, and two ways to make the seven. So it's a 50-50 bet. Two ways to roll the number, two ways to seven out. All right, so you have to work within your parameters when you get into dice setting. Remember, dice setting is about 15 to 20% of the game. Knowledge, money management, discipline, charting the table, knowing the game on both sides, both the do and the don't, that's about 80% of the game. So don't put the cart in front of the horse. Don't think that dice setting is a save all because if you don't know the other aspects of the game, uh, you're not going to be a winner uh, in the long run. Um, so let's see, do we have any questions coming in yet? Um, just a lot of comments. All right, so we hope we get some questions uh, eventually. All right. Anyways. Um, so we talked about the uh, the do side of the table. Remember, four ways for the uh, for the do player. All right, all right. Now we're back with the camera on the table. The best odds, and a lot of people don't know this when you're dice setting, is shooting from the don't side. Less than five percent of the players shoot from the don't side, and you can get the best odds at the table. I told you it's three to two for the six and eight, two ways for the four, two ways for the five, two ways for the nine, two ways for the uh, 10. When you set the dice, there's only one way to roll the uh, four, five, nine, and 10, excuse me, the uh, four, six, eight, and uh, four, six, that's, that's for the other one. Uh, We're looking at the prompter here. All right, so on the don't side, you've got uh, one way for the six, one way for the eight, one way for the four, one way for the ten. All the even numbers you can roll one way. There's four ways to roll the seven. So the odds are four to one in your favor because you have four ways for the seven, which when you're shooting the don't side, uh, you win, and only one way to roll the four, six, eight, and ten. 
And here's something a lot of players don't know. There's zero ways to roll a five and a nine, all right? So now the odds are four ways for the uh, seven, which is to win, and only, and zero ways to roll for the five and a nine. So do you understand how strong these odds are when you're playing? And even if the dice go off access, guess what's happened? You have six ways to roll random, all right? So I see we have a couple questions coming in. What do you see? Uh, what do you think, Amber? Um, oh, here's one from Dan, all right? I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to answer this question. I'm trying to get it on the screen, but it's not hitting. Uh, Dan wants to know, do you keep track of your roles so when you're practicing? Should I keep track? If so, or why not? Boy, that's a $10,000 question. I get asked this all the time. Uh, do I uh, keep track of my roles? Uh, I am going to get, well, I'll, I'll answer it now. Okay. It's called tra uh, role tracking. There's a lot of names for it. Before I answer the question, let me just tell you this, this story. When we were musicians, everybody wanted the best equipment uh, we could get, especially when we were putting stereo systems together. We all wanted Mac Macintosh amplifiers because they had the, with tubes, because they supposedly had the best sound. Uh, we wanted the best turntable because records were better than CDs, especially the early CDs, they were too compressed. We wanted the best speakers. I mean, it got to the point where it never ended. And a friend of mine who was kind of a scientist musician, he would put his speakers on a scope and he'd say, look, at, see how that high end is just a little higher with this speaker than the other speaker? I'd say, yeah, John, but unless you're in Tin Tin, you can't hear the difference. Just put the record on and play it. The point I'm trying to make is everybody wanted the best toys you could get, all right? And it's kind of like the same with tracking your roles. There's all kinds of programs out there. Everybody wants the newest thing. Now, I definitely believe in practice. It's like a baseball player. The more you uh, pitch, the better you're going to be. You're never going to throw a strike 100% of the time. But if you don't try to throw a strike, you're never going to throw a strike. So you have to practice, practice, practice. But I used to do my own uh, tracking with dice setting, and I found this out. The sets that I do on Monday are totally different than the sets I do on Tuesday. It's kind of like the weather. They change from day to day, all right? Plus, when you're playing by yourself, you have no chips at the end of the table. Nothing's in your landing zone. Uh, there's nobody to bother you. You have no heat. You know, you're playing by yourself on pretty much a clean table. So to answer the question, do I track my uh, roles? No, all right? For those reasons, whatever I do today is going to be different from tomorrow. And I don't want to spend one minute tracking my role and two to three minutes putting it into the computer. So here's what I did do. I'm all about the KISS method. Keep it simple. That's the way I, we teach. Keep it simple. So I did come up with a tracking sheet, and I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try to go back to the table and see if uh, we can get to that. All right, so what this does is... I've got, uh, and you can make your own, it's got the uh, 7, 11, 2, 3, and 12 in the first column for your come out roll. I've got my field numbers, 2 through 12, in the middle, and I've got my point, uh, point numbers or place bets, 4 through 10. All I do is circle the number, all right? It takes a second. You've got, so, you've got a place on the side to do your notes, all right? So then after you track your numbers, there's 17 on one side. You flip it over, I double uh, Xerox it. Now you've got another 17. I can get 34 rolls on one sheet. Takes a second. The KISS method, all right? Then I can go back and put them into the uh, computer. And if you want to put what was on the right side and what was on the left and all that, be my guest. Go ahead. But here's the thing. I've never gone to a table and the dealer said, I've never gone to a table and the dealer said, you know, since you had the one on the... Uh, well, it's my left, your right, and the five on the uh, other side, or the two on one side, and the uh, four on the other side, okay, or the two threes, we're going to pay you more money, you know? You've rolled the number. You've rolled the six. So is it really that important to see what's on the right side and what's on the left side? 
I'd rather have the right set, roll the number, and get paid. All right. But if you think that it's real important and you feel that it's going to help you by putting what numbers on the right side and what numbers on the left side, you know, go ahead. Uh, to me, I just rather roll more numbers and and spend less time putting information into the computer. So I hope that answers part of the question. Um, let's see what else we have here. Can I use two hands to set the dice by Marlin? The answer is no. When you're at the table, you have to use one hand to set the dice and one hand to, uh, to roll. But if you know your inside access numbers, it's not the numbers on top that are important. I really don't care. In fact, if you ask a question about dice setting, give me the inside access numbers. That's what I care about. That is the glue that holds the set together. And I came up with the golden rule, and this will really help you. Your set is the same as your point. Now, what do I mean by that? The come out roll, you want the one and the six. Well, what number wins on the come out roll? Seven. What does one and six equal? Seven. Your set is seven. Your point is seven. All right. And we have that for every number. The four, the five, the six, the eight, the nine, uh, the ten, and of course the seven. So once you learn your uh, master sets and your inside access numbers, it's going to speed up your dice setting at least 50 percent. All right. So that's the key, guys. And uh, what we did was not only did we uh, explain all the uh, what what a uh, what a set is and how to use your inside access numbers, all right. But then we get into each set step by step, and we break it down on what your inside access numbers are. In fact, you know what? I'm going to give you a quick little uh, example here. I shouldn't do all this, but I got some new players. So, um, all right, here's the 6161 set. The photo on the left is the all seven set. The photo on the right is the hard way set. But you can see the inside numbers, the inside access numbers are the same. All right. I'm also going to show you one quick thing with the 3V set. Everyone talks about the 3V. All right. So there's the 3V, all right? All right, and you've got sixes and eights all the way around, right? So all they do is say, well, all you have to do is have the 3V and you're home free. Well, what happens if they, uh, what happens if they send over the dice? There's the 3V, but look, you've got the three, but then you have an 11, and then you have an eight, and then you have a craps three. So just because you have the 3V on top doesn't mean you have the right set because you didn't have the right app, have the right inside access numbers. It's all about the inside access numbers. That is the glue that holds your set together. So start thinking about inside access numbers. It'll speed up your dice setting and it will give you the correct set because you can have the wrong 3V and in the book I show you the wrong 2V for the fours. All right. So... All right, let's see what else we have. Um, well, many hop systems. Uh, okay, which ones do you recommend? Again, the hop system is basically you're trying to hop a number for a one roll action bet. You have to figure out what number you want to hop and then use the set. Uh, here's what I, in the back of the book on page, uh, I forget myself. Go to page, I'm going to bring it up for you. All right, go to page 77 and 78. All right, if you go to page 77 and 78, I took all the uh, sets, the 6161 set, all the sets, and I broke down every set and gives you all 16 combinations. So when you're hopping, you just have to know what set to use, and it'll tell you. There's one set that gives you all the hard ways. That's the come out set. There's one set that gives you the hard six and the hard eight. There's one set that gives you the hard four and the hard ten. And there's one set that doesn't give you any hard weight numbers. There's two sets that give you uh, eight ways for the uh, field and eight ways for not the field. So you have to do a little studying. You have to learn your 16 combinations for each set. And then you can get into hot betting. That's a little more of an advanced question for uh, basic uh, crabs. But... Uh, Interesting question. Remember, it's all about the
the KISS method. Keep it simple. I don't care what's on the right side and the left side. You know, if the one is on the right side and the five's on the left side, the five's on the left side and the one's on the... I don't care. It's the same, it's the same number. It's six. Pay me. I want to know what's the inside access numbers. All right. Um, so I hope that answers a few of the questions. I try to keep things as simple as possible. I mean, anybody that knows me knows I'm all about the KISS method. Why take something simple and make it really complicated? I'd rather take something that's complicated and make it really simple. All right, let's see what else we have. Um, what do you do when you have to hit the back wall all the time to make a legitimate roll? All right, this is from Ken. Uh, what do you do uh, when you have to hit the back wall? Well, Ken, in this, in this game, it's finesse. Lighter is better, all right? I'm trying for about two to four inches behind, before the back wall. I don't know if you ever pitch pennies when you were a kid. You want to do it really as soft as possible. Obviously, a harder table with less bounce is going to be a little bit better than a real bouncy table. Uh, there's a good friend of mine teaches by the name of Howard Rock and Roller. He has some uh, uh, sets that he uses. Obviously, I can't get into them, but uh, he's, he's really good at... Uh, at that type of uh, work. He also does off, uh, off access rolls, which are a little more complicated. But to answer your question, try to hit the back wall uh, two to three inches before. Softer is better. You don't want him to go off access. You don't want a lot of spin. All right, we're getting a lot of questions, guys. We're going to try to answer as many as possible. Uh, okay, and I see some guys are just saying hello to friends and things like that. I get it. Um, could you see me more? Uh, well, that's oh, that's Howard Newman. <laughs> Howard called. Well, Howard gets a little extra. Thank you, Howard. I'll see you next time you come into Vegas. All right. So let's see. Where else do we want to go? Um, oh, and for people that uh, can't make it to Vegas, obviously a lot of people know we have the super system. You know, I've got about 15, 20 books in my collection. And by the way, I've read a lot of books by other authors on dice setting. A lot of them are very good. I picked up a lot of stuff. But even the authors will tell you, hey, dice setting is not the, uh, the answer to all your questions. Uh, I've got a book here, and I'm just going to read a little excerpt. It's on page 131. Now, this is the, uh, this is the author talking, not me. So it's the author. But he said, uh, I went 0.7 out so many times that I thought I'd change my, not, my name to 0.7 out. And he gives his last name. I won't do it. But I have the money to sustain a loss. Uh, I had 72 straight losses in a row. All right? 72 straight losses in a row. Now, if you're losing $100 per game, that's 7200 These guys are big players. If you had $200 a loss per game, that's 14400 yeah, most people can't get out of that hole, but obviously, you know, they did. So it goes on and it just says, of course, a great controlled shooter can make a strong comeback. In a trip one month after 72 straight defeats, we played 12 days, won 118 out of 144 turns, uh, and was able to get back uh, our losses. We had two rolls of 50 plus after our 72 straight losses. Controlled shooting works. But you do have to understand that you will have ups and downs. Don't let this destroy you. So it comes right from other authors. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. Okay. I think the key is, you know, when you go in, you're looking for a, a certain return on investment. We're looking for 20, 10, 20, 30%. We chart the table. We know how to hedge bet. We play on both sides of the table. The next class we're going to get into is going to be a little bit uh, more of that. Okay, so anyways, I was saying uh, if you can't come to Vegas, we are going to start to do classes in this format. They're called webinars. So we can get four people onto a uh, class at one time. We're going to break it down. We're going to be doing three separate classes. One is beginner and intermediate. That's for people that just know the basics or don't know anything about crafts. You know, come to that class. The second one is advanced and super. Obviously, that's for people that really know a little bit about uh, 
craps and want to take it to the next level. And then we're going to do a class just on dice setting. Now, a lot of this information is in the book and in the dice setting video, uh, which you can get, the super system. But if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one class and I, you can ask me questions, it's going to be this type of format. Uh, we can do split screen. We can bring you on the screen. And it will be private. No one's going to see it. It's not going to be public. Uh, so if you have any questions about that uh, or you want to get a, uh, in contact with us, we're at PlatinumCraps.com. Right, that's the website. You can uh, email us at garrison at gmail.com. The office number is 702-487-5223. Just call us. We'll give you more information. We'll set up a time uh, so we can do classes for uh, one person all the way up to four people. And I, I really think it'll help. And plus, we get a little bit of feedback from you on, on what you think. Uh, let's see here. I'm looking over at the questions here. Da, da, da. A lot of hi, how are you? Da, da, da. All right, here's one from Daniel. It would be nice to pick uh, one or two days out of the year where we could all get together, learn, chart, uh, build real. Well, that's true. I, I hope some guys will come out to Vegas and uh, we could do that. I know next week the guys from the Hawaiian Crabs Group are coming out and uh, they're gonna, uh, we're going to meet with them. Oh, here you go. Mike Benton. Where's Amber? Okay. Well, you want to say hello to Amber? She may have something to say. Uh, say hello to Mike, Amber. Hello. There, There is Amber, Mike. Hi, Mike. Okay. Nice to meet you. All right. So, <laughs> I know. You probably want to see Amber more than you want to see me. I get it, guys. Okay. I get it. All right. But be nice. All right. So, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. So, all right. What else do we have here? Um... Well, we get a couple of high Louis and some other people. Uh, what can we do more? Am? All right. So, anyways, um, we'll keep watching for the questions. All right. So let's just kind of do a little bit of review. Learn your master sets. There's four sets for the do player from the do side. All right. Remember what I said: three ways for the six, three ways for the eight, two ways for the four, five, nine, and ten. Two ways for the seven. That's a 50-50 bet. So the best you can get on dice setting is three to two for the six and the eight, even money on the other numbers. From the don't side of the table, one way for the four, six, eight, and ten, four ways for the seven or win in your case, and zero ways for the five and nine. All right. So now the odds are four to one or four to zero in your favor. Those are the best odds you can get at dice setting, guys. And unfortunately, nobody plays on the don't side. Now, I've worked with a crew here in town where sometimes when the tables are uh, busy or the low limit tables are full, we'll go over to a high limit table, higher limit. We'll set the dice for four, five, nine, and ten. We do one or two hedge bets. We may do a couple DC bets. We can get that in a later class. But then we set the dice uh, to seven out, okay? We've got four ways to roll the seven, only one way to roll our point, and zero if it's the five and nine. And even if the dice go off access, you've got five ways to roll the seven. So the odds are in your favor. It's a great way to play. Uh, I, I did two chapters on uh, shooting from the don't side. I also spoke about it in a, in a couple interviews. So learn both sides of the table. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, here's another comment. Here you go. I do. I love the dunk side. Yeah, it's, it's, the odds are there if you know how to play it. All right. And even when I'm shooting, I'll take some hedge bets and, and bet on the dunk side because obviously, you know the old statement. It's not if it's going to happen, it's when is it going to happen? When's the big one going to happen? Not if. Well, it's the same with dice setting. It's not if the seven's going to happen. It's when the seven's going to happen. So you have to, you know, do your homework, put yourself in a position that when that seven comes, you're not going to get wiped out with all your place bets. And you can actually win on, on, on some of those bets on the don't side. 
Uh, I love the don't come section of the table. I'm not going to get into it tonight. We may do another. The next show we're going to do is uh, casino math versus real math. So we will get into that then. So, you know, hopefully you guys will uh, tune back in. All right. So I hope we've answered some of your questions. All right. Um, you can, like I said, you can do your own tracking uh, system, which I do. Very simple. 7, 11, 2, 3, and 12 in the first column. All my field numbers, 2 through 12. And then my place bet numbers, 4 through 10. I just circle. In fact, here's a couple that I was doing the other day. I just circle the numbers. If you want to put notes in there, if you want to put right 1, left 2, left 5, 1, right 1, whatever you want to do, I don't care. And then you can put this in the computer, and that'll, that may help you. All right. I just want to practice and get as many rolls down the table. Okay. So uh, I had a text uh, earlier, and they asked me about uh, not only the uh, Platinum Crafts book, but the super system. So obviously, you know that a lot of people have already had the, the Platinum Crafts book. That includes what it, it's got, truly, it's one of the best books, not because I wrote it, just because the information is easy to understand. It has all the information for all the sets. It gives you all the photos for all the sets. It tells you exactly what uh, numbers to put together for any number you're trying to roll, and it's the KISS method. Uh, then John's got his two books. This is the be beginner and basic book. Well, if you do the beginning and basic class that we talked about earlier, we're going to take it from this book. For the people who want to step up, uh, The Holy Grail, my favorite book, uh, the 600-page uh, advanced craft book, very hard to uh, find, out of print. And John actually takes time out to autograph it for all of our students. So that, that's a must. Uh, we basically had all the classes, beginner and intermediate. We had advanced and super. We had the dice setting class that, that, that I did specifically on dice setting. And that was beginning dice setting um, for the do, the don't, and advanced sets, which are more for ATS and hot bets and things like that. There's a super uh, set that I use that covers multiple bets. You can play it on the do or the don't side. You've got uh, field bets, uh, horn bets. It's a great set. All right, so those are on DVD, but most players don't even have a DVD player anymore. So for all the millennials and new players, we put it on flash drive. All the classes are on this. You just stick it in your computer. It's like going to college. You watch the class, you read the book, and you go at your pace, okay? You don't have to be a member. You don't have to sign up for anything. There's no dues. And it's cheaper than your whole buy-in. So if you guys buy in for 150 to 200 you can get the whole super system for less than your buy-in. If that's not enough for you, and don't you think it should be? We throw in the dice setting strategy card. This you can use uh, at home to practice, or I know guys that put it in their chip rack. It has all the uh, sets for the do numbers on one side. You flip it over, it's got the sets to establish point seven out with the inside access numbers. And we just added something new. Uh, I've been throwing in a set of dice as a special gift for all my, uh, all my uh, new members. I'm going to go back to the table and see if I can get this. Okay, so what we've done is, sometimes this uh, camera locks up, don't know why. But what we've done is we've, we've gotten uh, the dice in four colors, red, green, blue, and purple. You can pick any color you want. I just shipped out uh, a gentleman wanted red and blue with white dice, very patriotic. Okay, they come in uh, four colors, five packs to a color. And we'll ship you out two boxes, and then you can just practice. And it's great for when you're uh, dice setting because you can see if you're on access. I always recommend you start with the 6161 set because you've got that set as your inside number, and you'll have that set as your outside number. So when you throw five sets of dice down the table, all you want to see are twos, threes, fours, and fives. It doesn't matter what's on top, what numbers. But you haven't thrown the one and the six, so you've stayed on access. That's the key, staying on access. After you know you've stayed on access, you can start practicing with other sets. So for all my new students, start with the one and the six as your inside access numbers. 
Seven is your point, seven is your set. If you want the hard ways, great. You want all sevens, that's great. I don't care. You just want to see two, threes, fours, and fives, and that'll get you started. Um, all right, well, we talked to uh, that. Uh, I love the dog. We're just uh, looking for some more, some more questions for anybody. Let me go back to the beginning because I wasn't even paying attention. Okay. Okay, well, Marlon, Danny, Richard. Okay. All right. All right, well, I'm glad you guys were excited to see the show. I hope we answered a few questions. Listen, if uh, I didn't answer a question here, I get a question later. Uh, you can send it to us at garrisoncraps at gmail.com uh, or leave it below uh, here. And then after tomorrow, when I go on YouTube, I can actually write the answer into the, uh, into the column below. Okay. So I think what we'll do is uh, let's bring Amber back. I know a lot of people would rather see her than me. I get it. All right, so, um, there, oh, look at that. She's ready for the tables, guys. She looks fabulous. <laughs> like Las hat? Vegas hat, all right? Vegas, for sure. Oh, my God. I'm sure the guys will be asking you to go out to the table. That looks great. <laughs> so what do we, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm parched. I'm going to have a, uh, a drink out of my King Dice cup. Sounds good to me. I want to say hello to King Dice and all his members. I love the cup. All right, let's have a drink. To Cheers. And Amber, what do we always tell our people when they're going to the table? What is our number one kind of house rule that we tell everybody? Good luck, Good luck at, at the, the tables. tables. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you. Have a great time. Get a hold of us. Miss Amber will be back. I'll be back. Thanks for having me, guys. I can't wait to hear all your questions next time. Bye! <laughs>